Hello, ladies, and welcome to week three of our Bible study in our Come and See Bible study, studying the book of John. We are so excited to have you with us tonight. I want to remind you of the theme of the book that we'll be talking about every single week. It's found in John 20, 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So the point of this whole Bible study is that you would believe in Jesus and that you would experience a life because of your belief in Jesus. So our homework for this week was found in John 4 and 5, and our memory verse was John 1, 4 through 5, which says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. So each week in our teaching time, we're taking an aspect of Jesus, and we're discussing it. And for this week in our study, I'm encouraging you to take some notes as we talk about Jesus as the Savior who satisfies. Jesus as the Savior who satisfies. You know, two times in my life really stand out to me as really full understanding coming to me of the importance of water. The first time I ever realized truly how important water was in my life was when I took my very first overseas mission trip to India. Because when you go to countries like India, it's not safe for you to drink the water. They're very cautionary. Don't open your eyes in the shower. Whatever you do, don't brush your teeth with the water. Because if you do that, you could get really sick. And then the rest of your mission trip uh, won't be a great experience because you'll be running to the bathroom all the time. So when I was in India, I made sure the whole time I was there, I always had a bottle of water with me at all times. And it was super hot too. So there's a lot of times where you felt dehydrated. And the second time in my life where I really understood the importance of water was right before the church started the huge tornado that came through Joplin and destroyed Joplin, Missouri, destroyed the city. It was one of the very first times that our church, as a church that hadn't even officially launched yet, came together with our core team and brought supplies down to Joplin. And one of the main things they needed is water because there is no access to clean water, there was um, so many people working and just the devastation. They were serving. They were hauling things out. They were thirsty, and they needed water. And it's crazy when I think about those stories, and then I think about what we learned in our Bible study this week, I realize that we are a country in a world that is obsessed with water for very good reason. In fact, I've brought here today just a small sampling of the water bottles that can be found in the Newsom's house at home. We have so many of them. And tonight at your tables, we have given each of you a pitcher of water and cups because we want you to be drinking water all night long as we talk about Jesus as the living water, as the Savior who satisfies, to remind us of how important he is as our Savior who satisfies us. You see, we see and understand the urgency of water. If you've ever run outside on a hot day or taken a hard workout class, like you know what it is to be urgent for water. But so often, we do not think about the urgency of the gospel and the urgency of our spiritual need for living water. And so many people in our life are walking around living in spiritual dehydration because they don't know that Jesus came as the living water, living water to satisfy their soul. There's a lot of tongue twisters today. Um, so when you think about it, when you have water and you understand it's important how valuable it is, you understand how important it is to share it. Like when we went to Joplin, we understood we had something that was that could satisfy, that could help, and we had to share it. So we were handing it out. We were distributing it. But we don't always live like that every, every day of our Christian life. We don't always live like we have something that is so important, so valuable to you that we want to share it with you. And so we've got to help the people in our life who are living spiritually dehydrated lives. I love this quote by C.S. Lewis. He said this, the church exists for nothing else but to draw men into Christ. And this week, one of the most powerful examples we saw of this was Jesus and the Samaritan woman. In fact, when we reflect on that story, we saw that Jesus was the only one who could truly satisfy her soul. He was the only one who could fill her spiritual thirst. 
We saw that Jesus knew her shame, but he loved her anyways. And we realized that the gospel, the good news about Jesus was for all people, even a woman, even a Samaritan woman. The gospel was for all people. And what I really appreciate about this is that Jesus modeled this for us, that sometimes we have to go where we don't want to go so that we can share the love of Jesus with people. Sometimes we have to get a little bit uncomfortable. And what was really neat when you read the story, and if you've ever watched The Chosen, which I totally recommend because they modeled this so well in that show, was that she became the first convert we read of in the book of John and the very first missionary to go and tell others about Jesus. You know, here at Journey, we have a core belief that's sharing Jesus, and we say, if you know him, you show him, and that's what we want to reflect on tonight. We want every one of us to realize that if we know him, we have to show him to others. Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon said it this way. He said, oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, if sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies, and if they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees, imploring them to stay and not madly to destroy themselves. If hell must be filled, at least let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions and let not one go there unwarned or unprayed for. I love his heart for lost people, that we would be able to stand in the gap for people who don't know Jesus. Jesus told us to do this in Matthew 28, 19. He said, therefore, go make disciples of all nations. So if we have this living water, water, if we have this Savior that satisfies our soul, our reaction should be to go and to share that and to tell others about him. So I want to ask you, who are you actively sharing Jesus with in your life? Does God bring someone to mind right now? And then my second point that I want to bring up we talk about water imagery, we can't help but think about baptism. Jesus modeled baptism for us. John the Baptist brought the baptism of repentance to people to help prepare them. And then we see all throughout the New Testament that people would accept Christ and immediately get baptized. And what's really special about Journey is at Journey, when you get baptized here, it gives you an opportunity to not only be baptized to show that you're following Jesus, but to also tell your story. And there was one time early in our church, I think it was in 2013, where sitting at youth camp, I had a realization that I needed to be baptized. And I want to share my baptism story with you today, so let's take a look at it together. That's what you're all thinking, so I thought I'd just go ahead and break the ice a little bit. I preached a few weeks ago on, um, on Jesus' baptism, what it meant, why he did it. And Danielle approached me at camp, she said, Christian, I really feel like God has laid on my heart that... Um, that I'm supposed to get baptized. You'll hear why in her testimony. She said, what do you think about that? And I said, I think as leaders, if we're not willing to do what God tells us to do, no one will ever do what God tells them to do. So um, she's here because of what God laid on her heart. Here's what she says. I accepted Jesus when I was six years old in Chattanooga, Tennessee. My dad was an evangelist, and that night as he preached, I clearly heard and understood for the first time that Jesus had come to this earth, lived a sinless life, and died for me so that one day I could be in heaven for eternity. I remember clearly understanding that there was a heaven and a hell and knowing that I wanted Jesus to save me. In eighth grade, I rededicated my life to Jesus and my faith clearly became my own at that point. I felt like God was calling me to a life of ministry and I began to pursue that by singing, leading worship and getting involved in leadership with my youth group. The last couple of years as Christian has been teaching on baptism at church, I've realized that baptism is supposed to be an event almost as significant as your salvation moment. A time for you to proclaim to the world that you love Jesus and want to follow him. While I was saved at a very young age and clearly remember making a conscious decision to follow Jesus, I don't, however, clearly remember my baptism. A few weeks after I accepted Jesus, I was baptized, but I'm not sure that I understood the significance of what I was doing at the time. I know a lot of adults are afraid to get baptized, but I'm hoping that if I, the pastor's wife, can come today to get baptized and declare my love for Jesus, that I will encourage others to do the same. And I can think of no greater honor than having the man I love and admire the most in the world baptize me. You know that I love you with all my heart, right? And I'm proud of you for being an example to, um, to adults who just, they would wonder what people would think about them if, if they did this. And I love you, and I'm so proud of what you're doing in our church and happy for what you're doing in our church. And you're my favorite worship leader in the world. And also, <laughs> I love my wife and all that stuff. Um, 
and it is a tremendous honor for me today, my lovely bride, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism. You are raised to walk in the name of So that's my baptism testimony. My question for you today is, is it your turn to get baptized? Have you maybe made a step to follow Jesus but never been baptized before? We're going to provide an opportunity for you tonight to go ahead and sign up to be baptized. But you see, part of baptism and really part of our life of as Christians, and tonight, the purpose of our study is this, that we all have stories of a Savior who has satisfied our soul, and it's our job to share those stories with the world. Tonight at Bible study, we've provided you with a sheet that's going to guide you through writing out your testimony, and this is going to be such a powerful experience for you if you're a brand new Christian, but also if you've been a Christian for a long time, because sometimes we forget that we are supposed to share our stories. So we're going to be sharing our stories tonight, and we're also going to be sharing our stories and our discussion here. So I'd love to introduce our panel to you and let them share their stories with you. You've been joined by us in the last few weeks with Vanessa and Hannah, but Becca, I want to trust you and have you introduce yourself to our ladies and tell us about your story of how you came to know Jesus. Yeah, uh, thank you, Danielle. So my name is Becca Alvord. I'm new to the Journey staff. I'm excited to be with you guys. My testimony started out when I was six years old. I was like you. I came to the faith, the faith very early. I had a great Sunday school teacher who told me, this is Jesus, this is not Jesus, here's how you get to Jesus, and here's how you get eternity. I believed it as a, as a really, really young kid, and I just was off to the races. But my testimony has more to do with uh, what does God want from my life versus what I want from my life and kind of the struggle with that. Uh, Growing up, I was really good at soccer, like insanely good. And uh, so I remember I started being called into ministry in high school and I just wanted no part of it. Just didn't sound interesting. It didn't sound fun. It didn't seem like something that would be a good fit for me. So I, I said no to God. I've said no to God five times in my life for what God has asked me to do in my life. And coincidentally, I have had five knee surgeries because of five knee injuries. So I get to my senior year of college, and the final knee injury was kind of the one that took away all of my chances of playing at the next level after college soccer. So I remember going back to my dorm room, and I was so mad. I was just mad. I was mad at God. I was mad that this injury happened. I'm like, this is the fifth time. Why, God, are you taking this away from me again? Why do I have to relearn how to walk again? Because that is, a, it's hard. It's hard to come back from the surgeries. I remember in my dorm room, I've never heard the audible voice of God, but I've heard something really close. And I remember praying, I'm like, God, why did you take this away from me? Why won't you just let me do what I want to do with my life? You gave me this gift. And he said, Becca, I did not make you to be a soccer player. I made you to be a minister of the gospel. And here's the two promises you will have for the rest of your life. Number one, you will never be comfortable in this life. So far, that has been very true. (laughs) Number two, your ministry will always be unconventional. And I remember actually taking God seriously after I had that encounter with him. And I dropped soccer in the future of soccer. I got myself, you know, healthy again. And I started pursuing what God wanted for me in ministry. And I'll tell you, uh, I scored a lot of soccer goals. And it was really fun. But I would say that there is nothing more peaceful than knowing that I'm exactly where God wants me to be. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And uh, there's not a goal that I've ever scored that could ever compete with that. Oh, man, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hannah, what about you? Like, what, what is your story? You've kind of alluded to it in previous weeks, but tell us about how you came to know Jesus. Yeah, so um, I grew up in the Bible Belt, which is basically means there is a lot of people who go to church, and there's a lot of people who know a lot of things about Jesus, um, and my family kind of went to church, kind of didn't go to church. Um, I like understood that God existed and I wanted that. Um, but when I got into high school, I just walked through a lot of trials, um, pretty early on for a kid my age. I had several people close to me pass away. Um, I really, really struggled with my health. I struggled with my mental health. And so by the time I got to the end of high school, I've walked through all of that. I just felt like either God didn't care about me or he wasn't real 
and so just kind of through all of that, I was like, I just don't think this is like what I want to be part of anymore. <clears throat> and so that led me through a lot of making really not great choices and having not great friends. And I just got to a point, I'll never forget, I just felt so exhausted. Like I was so exhausted of keeping up with that life. And I'll never forget, I was, I started going to church. I was like, I need some friends, I don't know, like that make, that are nice and then make good choices. So I was like, I guess church is a good place to find those. Like I really wasn't looking for Jesus. Um, and I will never forget encountering the presence of God and just realizing like he knew I was going to be here and he knew like I was going to be at this conference instead of at this party that I got invited to. And like he, his presence met me there and it radically changed my life. And for the first time I realized like Jesus really loved me and he saw me and he wanted to be close to me and he cared about me. And that when I walked through these difficult things for me, like instead of looking to other things and parties and friends and all of that kind of stuff, like I could find what I was actually looking for um, in Jesus. And so it was life changing for me. Like when I went to college, this is so weird, but I would like go to fraternity parties and like and not participate in like the partying part, but just like hang out. And people be like, why aren't you like doing, you know, why aren't you drinking and stuff? And I was like, I have something better. I have the Holy Spirit. I was so weird. But, like, people were like, wow, tell me about that. And so I would, like, bring him to church with me. I was so weird. Um, but knowing that, like, I could walk through anything and that God's presence would give me peace and hope and joy in the middle of that, it was, like, it changed my whole life. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of my story. That's awesome. I love that. I love how each of our stories are so different, but meeting Jesus, like, is the key point. Vanessa, what about you? Like, what's your testimony? What's your story of a Savior who satisfied your heart? Well, I've been a Christian a really long time like you, so in a few decades <laughs> before. Um, so I was thinking about this because, I, you know, I also was really young when I came to know Christ um, in vacation Bible school, and um, there's lots of parts of my testimony, though, because, you know, you change, and you grow, and, and you revisit why you're, you have your faith, but one of those reasons um, that, or periods where I, I had to reconfirm, um, there was a period in, in mine and Todd's marriage where we weren't in any church anywhere, like we had, we'd done the church shopping thing, and it was a very discouraging time, and we just kind of gave up. And so, not intentionally, we didn't just say, I'm done. We just didn't go anywhere. And it became a prolonged period of time. And I just remember thinking, um, I had been at work, and um, I, don't, I don't remember what happened. I just remember the way that I felt. And I was just like, wow, I... I don't really like me anymore, you know, because I had lost that, well, my, my flame had, it was just embers. Like, I was still there, and if you had asked me and impressed me, I could still quote things to you, and I would check the box that I was a Christian, but I was not walking out my faith in my own life, and I realized, you know, I was grumpy, you know, I, I was easily angered, and, I, you know, all of those fruits of the Spirit disappear, and um, that was the moment I was like, we have got to find a church home because that I don't like the me. I don't like who I am. I'm a really, really messy person naturally. Like that's kind of actually my, my nickname, <laughs> messy. But, um, you know, I need God in my life because he's, he's the glue that holds me together. Yeah, I love it. Thank you guys so much for sharing your story. And for each of you there at Bible study tonight, if you are in person, we are going to have an exercise together. We're going to write our story because each of these stories are so precious. You have the story of initially meeting Jesus, but then you see that your faith, that's one of the reasons Christian wanted to call um, the church journey was because you walk out your faith and your faith journey continues, hopefully for your whole life. God is always speaking to you, growing in, growing you and challenging you in some way. So we definitely want to share that. If you're watching online, we're going to post that um, sheet that will guide you through that exercise on our ladies' Facebook page. And then secondly, have you been baptized yet? Would you like to share your story of what Jesus has done in your life with our church? If you are in the house, we're going to have a place where you can sign up for that. 
But if you're watching online, you can text Journey Connect to 474747, and you can share with us through that that you would like to be baptized. Well, I want to thank you so much for, ladies, just for sharing your story. It, it's so hard to, to open yourself up and to do that. But someone tonight, different people will be ministered to by each of your stories because it's going to hit them exactly. God has them listening. God has you listening for a specific reason tonight to get something out of somebody else's story. Um, so thank you for being a part of this, our study on um, John in this week three. We want to remind you that next week, October 12th at 630, we will be going through week four of our Bible study together. Um, let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for Jesus, who is the Savior who satisfies our soul. Lord, thank you that we are no longer walking around in spiritual dehydration, but Lord, that we are so full of the living water that he offers to us. God, I pray that we would be people who overflow, Lord, to everyone around us, sharing the love of Jesus, sharing what he's done for us. God, make us a light, make us a testimony for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week.